The starting point of development should be the people. This is coming from Kwasi Ado Amankwa, and in this slide, I'll be talking about inclusive development. Sometime last week, I wanted to get some fresh roasted corn somewhere on VI. But as I pulled over beside the sellers, so I can carefully select a couple of soft ones with some ube to go with it, I saw them scampering, trying to pack their corn and other stuff as they run away. What was going on, I wondered. Then I saw them, the environmental task force people, as their truck drove past. Fortunately, they did not stop, I guess because their truck was already filled with seized items and offenders. They had made enough kill for the day. I ask myself, don't we need to question our approach to the so-called street trading? Should a Nigerian society define itself by what goes on in Europe, America, or Dubai? Won't we lose our soul in that process? Is it part of development that I cannot find a place to buy fresh roasted corn? Should I need to go online for that too, or start to look for a market or more just to find a cup of fresh corn to eat. These corn sellers were not obstructing the traffic, and they cleaned the environment every day after their day's activities. If it was the residents of the environment that don't want them, maybe it would make some sense. But the reality is that the people in the neighborhood are the primary consumers of what they offer. So why should government deny us the accessibility to roasted corn in the name of development? Is that development? Is it development to chase away all the small sellers in the market in the name of market redevelopment? Are there no models that accommodate these small people? Is it development to render small people homeless in the name of redeveloping slums? Are there no models that provide for their housing too? The development that is measured by the number of private jets and GDP growth had swallowed up the development that really touches the ordinary citizen. It is a development that measures itself by the several large unoccupied houses and locked stalls in malls where citizens have nowhere to sleep or do their selling. Growing up, my parents were high school teachers. We lived in an official accommodation on the premises of the school where my father taught, a three-bedroom bungalow with store, kitchen, dining room, and of course the toilet facilities. We had pipe on water and a water tank. We also had a big garden with all sorts of fruit. We cultivated vegetables and a few other things. We had a family car. And although we did not travel abroad, we toured Nigeria in that car during vacations. That kind of life, which ensures that a teacher can live in a decent accommodation, have a car, pay his bills, take his family to see other parts of his country, is my preferred definition of development. I remember one vacation when we drove all the way from Elisha in Oshun State to Bogu Games Reserve in Niger State, stopping at all interesting places along the way, including the Kanji Dam. I remember the fresh fish meal we had at Jeba. We also saw paper meal at Iwopin. Slept over at small cities where we had never been before without any fear. There was nothing to fear. That is what I call development, one that accommodates the small people that I advocate. Very well done. Yeah, uh, oh, wow. well, uh, you know. Thanks, Gwala. Well, uh, that was I, quite interesting. I, I saw that was um, what um, instructed my advocacy last week, Nigerians destroying Nigeria, because I saw how, you know, those tax force people, you know, were, you know, rushing those goods, items, yeah, items good, on the yeah. road and, he, you know, chasing Ridiculous. the people away. And then I looked at myself, I said, oh, this is very instructive, how government will use the poor to chase away the poor, wow. how government will use the poor to impoverish the poor. Wow. Um, and, and, and so, these people are selling by the roadside, not by their own design. If life were better, they wouldn't be there selling roasted corn. Um, like you said, growing up, I also was the son of a teacher, and we lived in staff quarters, you know, with the um, same description. And, and so it was very common to not to, to be very comfortable, not to want anything else. But the moment you now find out that you were retired prematurely and you had nowhere to go, and that's where people now started looking for alternative, how to acquire 
my own. It and then you had to chase. Corruption. I know how many of my mm -hmm. father's friends died queuing up to collect pension. pension. You know, I know how many also, you know, died on the roads traveling to collect pension. And, and so, if you truly, truly desire a better Nigeria, you put all of these structures and infrastructures in place, you won't see anybody beg on the street. Most of these um, people who are taking up arms will be engaged in industries, in paper mills, in Bachita Sugar uh, Factory, in Delta Steel Company, you know, Shogbo Rolling Mill, in Just Rolling Mill, in Najakuta Steel Companies, that they will not have time to begin to chase after politicians or to be given arms, you know, against the state. But because we know that if these people are enlightened and educated, there is no way the politician will be relevant. So they keep them perpetually down. So when they throw crumbs at you, you know, you appreciate it's it. It's, 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 mm, mm. Well, I'm also the, the, the daughter of a, of, a, of a teacher, and it looks like we're celebrating teachers today. <laughs> right, and everything you, d you describe the same. Um, we toured Nigeria. It was with delight. Yeah. Nowadays, you can't. You're, you can't you're get worried on the about road. kidnappers on the way, <laughs> yeah. you know. And you said there was a, there was a school, th there was a book we read back then that even had uh, a family going around Nigeria. I can't remember the, the no, title no, of it then, it. but how can we reclaim this Nigeria back? How can we, what can we do to ensure that, as you said, street mm. traders are not seen as nuisances, as, mm. as, as, as irritants, as it were, because that's... Even if you see them, you must they, provide, they have a model that provides for them. For them, yeah. yes. Yeah, it, 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 you see, the thing is, um, I had a guy from, I think he's from, my, uh, from Côte d'Ivoire. He was a director in Coca-Cola Nigeria years ago, and we decided to do a prototype um, kiosk, which could be replicated all over Nigeria. The aim of the kiosk was basically to... It was basically to institutionalize street trading. Street trading. So it goes against what government is doing. But we wanted to make it a beautiful <laughs> thing. I also was on a Twitter chat once where I advocated even lay-bys on the road for you to stop and buy things and join traffic back. Right. So you now have roadside people there waiting to pounce on you if they want. Yeah. And then you get back onto the road in traffic. Um, the truth of the matter is that this is what makes our culture colorful. And somebody was arguing with me that, how can I say that street trading, demeaning yes. as it is, is our culture? Mm -hmm. And I said, it is not Just the demeaning like aspect market. of it. It's yes. not the demeaning part it, of it. It is that you have not done it in a way that is attractive, attractive yes. you know, and okay. all that. <laughs> all right, let's take a very fascinating one there. Let's take uh, Nafisat. Um, well, what I think about this particular um, issue is that we need more homegrown solutions. You know, solutions that have been crafted or created um, according to our culture, according to our ways and Correct. how we do things. I, Dubai looks beautiful. It's beautiful. The infrastructure is great. But we can't copy Dubai as it is and just plunk it right in the middle of Lagos because they are two different places with different cultures and there's so much difference about the two you know, regions. We need to, um, how I put it, come up with solutions that adjust to our particular reality. We don't necessarily, because um, how I put it, London says that A is A, we need to basically copy that and put it right here in Lagos. Like, for example, there is this young man, his name is called Prince Olare Ola Waju. What he has done so far is that he has taken plastic bottles. You know, we use a lot of plastic in Nigeria. So he takes plastic bottles. He even, you know, goes on social media. He tells people to donate plastic bottles. And they use it to build up schools in the rural areas. It's a homegrown solution. Yeah. So in an effort to, you know, develop Lagos, develop the whole of Nigeria, let's craft solutions that can, you know, that are attainable to our current reality. Let's not just copy it. And that also extends to laws and policies that we won't have in this country. Wow. For example, the social media law. I don't need to go into that because that's not the focus of this conversation, but emphasis is on homegrown solutions. Right. Thanks, Nafisa. Development is for the people, by the people, and with the people. Bolan truly speaks the mind of all Nigerians. So after the break, I speak about our evergreen nature, the trees.